All right, so now here we are. Um, they have asked me to uh, share a message of good news from the scriptures this morning, and I uh, will endeavor to do so. Uh, but I acknowledge that uh, I am not very serious, and so uh, speaking in front of you brothers and sisters makes me very nervous. I will make mistakes, and I ask your forgiveness ahead of time. Uh, so I wanted to start, uh, I, Brother uh, Willie... Uh, Brother Willie Franco told me last night, he said, uh, the message that you will preach, the topic of your sermon will be God. And I thought, oh, okay, preach a sermon about God. I can do that. It's all the things that we can preach about, uh, about God this morning. I will preach uh, on God's faithfulness. That is what I want to, uh, to tell you about this morning. Our God is faithful. He is faithful to us. In the present, he has been faithful to us in the past, and he will continue to be faithful to his people in the future. Each day we walk and we live, we are living and walking in God's faithfulness, taking care of us, providing for us, and we worship him because of his faithfulness to us. And so this morning I, uh, I also want to join, uh, I want to send you the peace of Christ that is coming to you from your brothers and sisters who worship in Chicago, Illinois, your brothers and sisters who are also spiritual and literal, biological uh, children of Brother Douglas uh, Gunselman, uh, his family spread out all over the entire U.S., in uh, Nebraska, in Nashville, Tennessee, in uh, Texas, in many other places, the, Dun uh, the Douglas Gunselman uh, family tree is spread out over the entire world. And I have uh, been so excited uh, over the course of this week uh, to meet all of the brothers and sisters, uh, many of whom were in the pictures that we saw before. And they send uh, their peace uh, and the blessing that we have in Christ Jesus to you. They pray for you often, and they want you to know that you are loved and that you are cared for, that you are thought of deeply and often in the states, in the United States, and, uh, and in uh, my church as well, as we give our peace to you. Uh, so this morning, let us, uh, let us talk about God's faithfulness. And this morning, as I, uh, as I want to do this, I want to focus on David, the biblical character from 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and the writer of many psalms. He was a man who God was faithful to. And so this morning I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to ask you to respond. I'm going to ask you, was God faithful? And you're going to respond, yes, God was faithful uh, to David in his life and in all the stories that we read about in uh, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. So when David, when David was just a young man, when he was a boy, he was, count, he was uh, yeah, he caring for his, his sheep uh, that his father had told him to care for. But he tells a story. He says, one day, one day, a lion and a bear attacked me. But God was faithful. Was God faithful to David when the bear and the lion attacked? Yes. Yes, God was faithful. He protected David from the, from the mouth of the lion and from the claws of the bear. He gave him victory, and he was faithful to him. What about when David was just a child, and he went out to fight the Goliath? He went out to fight the man who was much, much taller than him, much stronger than him. And he went, to, he went out to fight the, uh, Goliath. Was God faithful to David? Yes, yes, God was faithful to David. David said to the Goliath, You have come at me with a sword and a shield, but I come at you in the name of the Lord, and he will give me victory. He has protected me from the mouth of the lion and the claws of the bear, and he will protect me from you. And God was faithful. He gave David victory over Goliath. What about when Saul was a young man and Saul sent armies after David? Was God faithful to David? 
Yes, God was faithful. Saul sent the armies to attack David. He had to flee, run away in the wilderness, but God was faithful to him. God protected him from Saul's armies. And even the story where Saul was chasing him and found David hiding in a cave but did not know it. And David snuck up behind Saul and cut off a little sliver, a little part of David's robe. God was faithful to David. He gave his enemy into his hand. God was faithful. And even when David became king of all Israel, David fought against the enemies of Israel all around him, people warring, going to battle. Was God faithful to David? Yes. Yes, God was faithful to David. This is the story that we hear. David had many fighting men, and God gave David the victory over Israel's enemies. All right, a couple more. David was faithful many times. But even when David was unfaithful, when David was unfaithful, when David took Bathsheba, a wife who was not his own, he took Bathsheba into his house, and then to cover up his sin, he murdered, murdered Uriah the Hittite. Was God faithful to David? Yes. Yes, God was faithful to David even when David was unfaithful. Because God is faithful to his promises. David repented. He covered himself in ashes. And he fasted for three days in sorrow. And the Lord did not take his life. The child was forfeit. But God was faithful to David and gave him many more children through Bathsheba. And even his son Solomon. Because God was faithful. And near the end of David's life. David said to God, God, I will build you a house. But God was faithful to David. Was God faithful? Yes, God was faithful. Because when David said to God, God, I will build you a house, God said back to David, no, no, David, I, God, will build you a house. Meaning he will give him a family. He will give him a we call it a dynasty. He would give him many sons who would be king after him. He gave David a promise in that moment that from now on, a son of David would rule over the land of Israel, that a son of David would be king. And we find this promise fully fulfilled in Jesus Christ, who is the true son of David, the true son of God, and the king forever. God was faithful to David. And now I want to turn to Scripture. I want to ask you, if you will, if you have your Bibles with you, or if you have your Bibles on your phone, we're going to look at Psalm 86. And we're going to learn about how David prayed. Because God was faithful to David, it changed how David walked, and it changed how David prayed. So David prayed in Psalm 86. He prayed in such a way as to remember what God had already done. And he prayed remembering God's promises. This is what we will see in Psalm 86. Give me one moment, I need to... Thank you, my apologies. So David prayed. So in Psalm 86, we find a simple structure. And this structure was told to me by my professors at Harding College as a good way, an easy way to remember how to pray. And I will share that with you this morning. Uh, how many of you are students? Go to high school, go to college. I did not learn this way until college. My professor said, here, this is very simple, an easy way to remember. You can remember it by four, four letters. It spells the book of Acts. A-C-T-S. It's a very simple way to remember how to pray. We will see this in Psalm 86. So how to pray? We start 
by adoring God. We adore God for all that he has done. This is the way that Jesus begins his prayer. He says, my Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is Jesus adoring God. Because we praise him for all the things that he has done in our lives, all the ways that he has taken care of us, and everything that he has done to create the world and take care of the world. And then the second simple way, confession. When we pray to God, we adore him for who he is. And then we confess our sins, our unworthiness before God. This is when we ask for forgiveness. We acknowledge our, our limitedness, our ways that we are insufficient, our iniquities, both of our salvation, uh, both, um, and we acknowledge Jesus' sacrifice and his salvation for us. All right, the third. We adore God, we confess our sins, and then we offer some thanksgiving. We rem remember what God has done in our lives, and we thank him for his care for us. And then lastly, after we have done all these things, we pray a prayer of supplication. This is when we ask God, based on what he has done in the past, based on his faithfulness to us, then, based on his promises to us, we can say, God, please be faithful to your promises. Be faithful to your people. Continue to take care of your people. Continue to provide for your people. This is when we ask God to supply his presence to us. Supplication. And we, this we have at the end because it puts God in his place. And it puts us in our place. So you will see that this simple prayer uh, structure we will see, we will go through in the book of Acts. I mean, in the book of uh, Psalm 86. So how did David pray? He prayed in such a way to remember what God has done and remember God's promises to us. All right, this, uh, yes. Why is this important? This is important. Because, as I said before, it puts God in His place and puts us in our place. It helps us to not say over again and again, God, please give me, God, please give me what I want. Give me a toy. Give me uh, new clothes. Give me a new car. Give me a better job. Because we pray remembering what God has done and God's promises to us. God has not promised us uh, a new car, but he has promised us that he would move mountains to make way for us. God has not promised us a new clothes, but he has promised us uh, that he will clothe us uh, better than the, the very lilies of the valley. This is what Jesus says. Better will you be clothed than any wild flower. And if we pray, continually remembering what God has done, and what he has promised, then we will have the right uh, posture. We will have the right posture to receive what God will do. We will have the right eyes to see and ears to hear, as Jesus says. So that's why I share with you this, uh, this simple prayer. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And this is what we will see in Psalm 86. So if you will look in your Bibles with me. In Psalm 86, verse 8, this is where uh, David says, he says to God, There is no one like unto thee. Thou art great, and he says again, Thou art God alone. God is great. This is where we hear the, uh, the great hymn, How great thou art. Thou art great. Right here. And David, throughout this psalm, we see he says, Be merciful to me. God, I am full of iniquity, but thou art good and ready to forgive. He says, Great is your mercy towards me. And he prays again, Have mercy on me. David knows that he is in need. He is in need of God's forgiveness. He is in need 
of God's faithfulness, even when he is unfaithful. He has known that. He has learned that in his life, that God is faithful to him, even when he is unfaithful. And so he prays to God, be merciful to me. Great is your mercy towards me. Have mercy on me, O God. And throughout the Psalm 86, he says, For great is thy mercy towards me. Thou hast delivered me, my soul, from the lowest hell. This is what he says in 13. In other parts of the Psalm, you can see him giving thanks to God for what God has done for him. For great is thy mercy towards me. And thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. David has learned that he and his life are in God's hands. And he is thankful for what he has done. And then, at the end of this psalm, not until the very end of this psalm, does David say to God, this is what I want. God, please help me. I need your presence. To supply me. Because then he says in verse 15, uh, 14 and 15. O oh God. The proud are risen against me. And the assemblies of violent men. Have sought after my soul. This is what David needed. David was in danger. David was in danger for his life. And he prayed to God. These men. These men whom you know. Have risen up against me. And God, give me, give me protection. Be faithful unto me, God, just as you have promised to me. This is the structure that we see in Psalm 86. And we see it in other Psalms that David has written. He asks God for his presence. But first, he adores God. He confesses his sins. He offers thanksgiving to God. And then, after all that... He asks God for what he needs. So this is what we have learned. How did David pray? He prayed in such a way as to remember what God had already done. And he prayed remembering God's promises to him. How God had been faithful to him in his life. So this is our lesson. How then should we pray? Do we remember God's faithfulness to us when we pray to God? Do we ask God, God, please give me this, give me that? Do we remember when we pray that God has been faithful to us in our lives? Whether that means in, in giving us children, in protecting us as we travel, in giving us, um, sharing with us the good news as we all have received uh, forgiveness from Jesus. And do we pray often remembering God's promises? God has promised to share His blessing with us. Uh, not so that we can be puffed up, but so that the Lord's church can be built up. Is what we hear in Scripture. So what has God promised to us? God has promised, number one, His presence. His presence is what He has promised. He has promised to go with us wherever we go. Because that is what we truly need. We do not need uh, so much of what we, uh, what, we, what we think we have. We need only, uh, and most, most we need God's presence. At this moment, I could ask many of you, like, what else has God promised us? And we uh, should, we should go on and on uh, to recount God's promises to us. But this morning, I will not do that because... I want to go on, because in Psalm 86, we not only have David's prayer, but we have a promise that we have in Psalm 86, and I want to get to that. So in Psalm 86, in verse 9, we find a prayer and a promise. This is the promise that has been given to us in Psalm 86. It sticks out. It is not with the rest of the flow of the prayer of Psalm 86. And that's how we know that it is important. Because David is going on and on about what God has done in the past. He goes on and on about how God has been faithful to him. And he, thank, and he, and he asks prayers of confession, prayers of thanksgiving. But then this verse 
sticks out in Psalm 86. Because this is where David says, God, this is the promise that you have made, that all nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee and shall glorify thy name. And so this morning, since we are preaching from Psalm 86, this will be the promise that we will take with us. When we go throughout our day, we can think that it is up to us. It is up to us to spread the gospel. It is up to us to, uh, to share with our friends and our neighbors uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. But we do so because God has promised that this will be the future, that this will come to pass. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. So, so when we go throughout our day, it is very easy for us to think that it is, that it is up to us. Uh, we, can carry, we can carry a heavy load, in a sense. We can have a big backpack on our back of all of the things that we must do. Uh, that we must live a good life, we must uh, follow God's law, we must share the good news, we must, uh, we must be faithful to our, uh, to our family, to our children, we must be a good example. But we do all of that not because this is a heavy load that we must carry, but that because this is a promise that God is doing. God has made this promise to us, and we can live and we can pray knowing that God is doing this and not us. This prayer, this promise, allows us in the same way to put God in His place and to put us in our place. We are not going to do this by our own power, by our own will, but God is going to accomplish this because this is God's promise. And we can depend on God's promise and God's strength as opposed to our own strength. I want to offer that to you this morning. And so this morning as we um, have listened to Scripture and have, as we have heard this and read this, then I want to uh, allow us to respond to this good news that God is bringing all nations, all nations both in the United States and the Philippines, the missionaries that have been sent from the Philippines to Hong Kong, from Hong Kong to Singapore, from Singapore to Africa, from Africa to the United States, from Canada, all over the world the good news that people are spreading the gospel in God's name and that all nations will come to worship God because God is doing this, because this is a promise that God has made. So this morning I want to respond in worship and I want to respond in prayer, praying uh, that this promise would come true. So this morning uh, let, let us close our time in prayer uh, before we answer God's invitation to in worship. Let us pray together. Bow your heads with me. God, our Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us. You are powerful in the way that you have created the beautiful nation of the Philippines. We have seen it as we look at the mountains, as we experience the power of the rain, as we have experienced the goodness of this earth and how productive this earth is. You are so powerful, Lord, that you have done these things, that you have created all of this out of nothing. And God, we know that we do not deserve your mercy uh, because of our unfaithfulness, we have sinned uh, before you. We have sinned against others, but we have mostly sinned against you. We have broken your commandments, but you, O oh Lord, are faithful to us, even when we are unfaithful. And so this morning we stand before you in need of mercy, in need of your forgiveness. And we thank you that in Jesus Christ you have forgiven each one of us. You have given us the precious gift of the blood of your Son that transforms us, that gives us new birth and new life, that we can walk in newness of life and new creation. And God, we thank you for the way that you have blessed our family, 
We thank you for the way that you have take care of, taken care of us. You have given us food to eat. You have given us shelter. You have given us a family, brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. You have given us so much richness, Lord, and we thank you for it. And so this morning, we come before you asking you to fulfill the promise that, that you made, that you would spread the gospel through your spirit, through the power that you have, through your word, that you would bring many more people into our churches, into our family, that they would worship you in spirit and in truth, that you would give them the good news that Jesus has died for them, and that they can be disciples of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come in the world, that all of your promises would be fulfilled as Jesus returns to bring us all into the new heaven and the new earth, that we could live with you forever, eternally. And from that day, uh, from this day until that, Lord, we ask that we would pray always in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now this morning, let us turn and respond to what we have heard in worship as we worship together with all the saints. Amen. <laughs> 